Welcome back fellow techies, and today's video is something different, it's the Tech Talks. Episode number one, and today we're going to be talking about Digital Audio Workstations, or DAWs for short. But which one should we use? There's so many out there, and so many do all sorts of different things. Well, we're here to have a discussion about them today. Well, we have some free ones, we have some expensive ones, uh, and we have some ones that just do some basic editing and some basic techniques. Some that work on PC, some that work on Mac, some that work on both. I'm also going to recommend which one works best for recording and which one works best for editing. And I'll also give my opinions on which one I prefer the most and which ones I disagree about using. So first of all, we're going to start off with uh, just Audacity, really. Audacity is the basic free one. It allows you to edit on Mac and PC. It allows you to do basic editing. So it allows you to cut out beginning and ends. It allows you to edit out silences. It allows you to combine all the tracks together. It allows you to export as individual tracks and as multiple tracks, MP3s, WAVs. But it, when it comes down to adding effects to it, it's pretty basic, uh, where well, you can't listen to the track as it plays through. You can only listen to the track during previews, as they call it. Play it, exit the effect, and then rejoin it again. It's just a bit basic, really. But it's free, and we can't complain, because it's free on PC and on Mac. The next software we're going to talk about is Adobe Audition. Now, again, Adobe Audition works both on PC and on Mac. But it is quite expensive, depending if you're looking at buying the full Adobe package, the Creative Cloud as they call it, or just the software license. You can still find yourself copying out about 15 to 25 pounds per month just on Adobe Audition alone. Now, this is a very good bit of software. It does everything a DAW does. It allows you to edit, allows you to cut and paste, it allows you to do a multi-track recording. I find it more useful for editing. I haven't used it for recording. I just don't feel it's a suitable software for recording. I would prefer to using other softwares listed below. But for a Adobe package, Adobe have got a good name. It's a good bit of software uh, and the effects it's a step up from Audacity. It allows you to edit the effects whilst listening back to the track so you can get a more precise edit. Uh, it's better. I'm not sure if the plugins of the effects are the greatest, but they're better than Audacity's plugins. So we are moving up in the chain. They are better. But if you are wanting to spend a little per month maybe I would recommend buying it but if you don't want to spend anything then we could look elsewhere at a general purchase for a software instead because this is again a monthly subscription or you can pay a yearly subscription but again you're paying every year for a bit of software where you could buy one outright which we're going to talk about later on the next DAW we're going to be talking about is GarageBand. GarageBand is free for Mac only, but works on all other Apple devices, iPhone, iPads, Mac Pros, iMacs, etc. Any product that you buy from Apple should come with GarageBand. Now, GarageBand allows you to have Apple loops, which is a bonus, and they're free copyright loops, so you can make those of um, drum loops or orchestral pieces etc using the loop system it's also quite good at recording it's not the greatest you can do basic recordings if you have an audio interface uh, it's not the greatest like I said but it allows you to do the editing um, it is a as the industry call it it's like the little sister to Logic Pro X it allows you to do the editing like Logic does it lays this, its layout is the same as Logic uh, and it works just as well. It's like a, the beginner's guide 
to audio recording. Uh, the plugins are okay. Uh, the software is free, but you have to buy the Apple product. So in a sense, you are buying a thousand pound worth of product for a bit of free software. Uh, so some would say it's not free. The plugins for the effects, again, aren't the greatest. It allows you to do the editing, the EQs and the compressions and allows you to do it whilst listening back to the track, which is better again than Audacity, which you can't listen back to the track as you're editing. It allows you to split the windows so you can have your mixer appear, you can have your effects appear, you can do all automation. It gives you all that little bit more advanced skills, but still using a bit of beginner software. The next DOW we're going to be looking at is Logic Pro X. Logic Pro X is now going into the industry standard DAW. So there's about three at the moment industry standard DAWs. We've got Logic, you've got Pro Tools, and you've got Cubase for the potential PC users. Logic is an Apple only software. It's quite expensive at $199.99. Now for $199.99 you get that full project. You get all the Apple loops, you get updates. Logic is brilliant for recording, mixing, mastering, adding effects, panning, all sorts. It is the simple industry standard software. The plugins are good, are really good. And the layout of the software is really easy to use. In a sense, you could say Logic is quite logical. It automatically creates your stereo output and your master channel. So everything is already patched to the output. The mixer is really simple to use. The mute, solo and record buttons are really easy to use. Logic's basic functionality can also become more advanced with adding oscillators and voice changers and all sorts of different effects into it. It's quite good at removing the hum from a background. As we said before, it is a industry standard bit of software, but it's very logical to use and it's used in quite a lot of uh, schools and colleges to teach music technology or even music. It's very good for composing on. Uh, you can draw MIDI notes. You can play MIDI notes into the program using a keyboard. It is definitely an easy bit of software to use. The next DAW we're going to be talking about is Cubase. It, Cubase works on Mac and PC. Cubase has come on a long way since I last used it. Cubase can be known to be industry standard. It can be used in live sound. It can be used in filmmaking, just like Logic and Pro Tools. Uh, originally, Cubase was built for Windows machines and now it works on Windows and Mac. Given it the versatility and the same weightage to work against Logic and against Pro Tools, Cubase has a sound library just like Logic and Pro Tools. It allows you to add MIDI and create MIDI events just like Logic and Pro Tools. And it's a very good bit of software. It allows you to edit all sorts. Um, it's designed by Steinberg which is the music company that make instruments. Um, it's a DJ award winning software um, and was originally designed to sequence MIDI. So is Cubase good? Yes, yes it is. Now you have to use Cubase, you have to buy Cubase just like you have to buy Logic and Pro Tools and this is not cheap unfortunately. It is quite expensive at 500 pounds 
price including 20% VAT but again you'll have to buy a e-licenser required which is an extra £20 on top of that it is just expensive um, but you get the full package the full license uh, but it is, it is a good bit of software and it does everything you need to do it's perfect for drawing in MIDI and sequencing uh, works really well with a key um, a MIDI keyboard now onto the final DAW we're going to be talking about Pro Tools Pro Tools is for Mac and PC but this product is very expensive it can range from £598 for the full package so you're basically paying £598 near enough £600 uh, up front for the full product with a year's upgrades and support line or if you wanted to you could pay £30 a month for one year subscription um, downloadable product this product is brilliant for recording and mixing. So if you, have no, if you have your own audio interface, which you're really happy with the preamps, it's brilliant for recording straight into it. It's basically a, a, the industry standard, the top end industry standard of recording device. If you record into it, all the effects are mixed in the box these days. So the effects and plugins are brilliant to do mixing and mastering it allows you to export in the in cd format and then allows you to master to the highest level possible uh, the external plugins which you can download off-site plugins are brilliant that work with pro tools pro tools also is cross compatible with sabavius so you can do a lot of notation in pro tools and it will reopen in Sabadius because they're both run by Avid. A bit more difficult to do that in Logic but it works just the same but Pro Tools makes it a lot more easier. Now unfortunately Pro Tools makes you think when you're recording unlike Logic which creates your submasters and your master outputs with Pro Tools you have to create your subs and your masters and direct all your tracks in the correct order after you've created it shortcuts there's a complete keyboard shortcut guide online to do the shortcuts through a pro tools there's just so many it's unreal uh, like logic you can do 5.1 mixing it is a big step up from logic it makes it very worthwhile purchasing if you are looking at buying a very high-end bit of software in my opinion, I've organised the DAWs we've spoken about in order from one to five. One being the best and five being the worst. Um, Pro Tools and Logic, I would say, are joint first. Um, they both have the capabilities of doing industry standard work. Adobe Audition is second and GarageBand is third and Cubase is fourth with Audacity being fifth. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. And also ding dong that notification bell to get further updates. Thanks again. Goodbye.